switch on. Cool. Okay. So we're going to talk about um, at the very, very lowest level, some of the type systems are actually used by um, in, inside um, modern theorem provers, such as Koch and uh, Isabel and a few of the others. Um, so for many users, you'll oh, um, never know a lot of these details, but if you want to actually understand what's happening at the modern level, so think of it as assembly language for, for theorem provers. Um, many of them are based on um, things called pure type systems, which are a generalization of the lambda cube, which some of you would have heard of. So, um, so with, with a theorem prover, you're often trying to prove a particular statement, and um, we'll call it a proposition, and often you, can often, you want to make statements about those propositions, and then you want to make statements about statements about propositions, and so on. And if you're not careful, you can very easily um, get contradictions, like saying this statement is false, and try and prove that or disprove that, and you end up with um, nonsense. So they very carefully classify which statements can refer to other statements. So, um, so each pure type system has to specify basically um, three sets, and a different type um, theorem provers have, the, have um, chosen different sets. So I'll give you a few examples. So um, higher order logic, which is uh, often used with um, Isabel, and um, there's also a theorem prover called higher order logic, defines um, Basically, th three sorts: propositions, type, and a, um, a, a basically a type of types, and then the, you have relationships between them. Like um, each proposition is a type, and each type is, is um, I don't know, a special type. And then you can have um, relationships between propositions. You can um, um, you can have propositions about. Um, about statements about propositions and, and so on. And um, the next example is um, this is extended calculus of construction, which is a basically a massive ex um, expansion of the lambda cube um, used by theorem prover called Lego, which we're quite using much anymore. And um, basically, you can see it's basically got a, a the um, all the different sorts of basically in a sequence. So basically, each at each level, you can talk about statements at the level before. And then um, next example is going to be um, Koch, which we've heard about um, last time. And basically, you, you could, you've got um, propositions, you've got sets, and then you've got um, types, which basically um, type for statements about propositions and type for statements about sets. Um, and then again, you've got a whole, you've got a whole sequence of those types. And then um, basically, at any level, you can talk about any earlier level. Um, so it's just, and um, then um, okay. Once you've defined those three sets, then you can define um, you can the, the, you've got lots of various rules which define what sort of um, deductions you can make. So we've said before that. Um, well, If um, proposition type, if that was one of your axioms, then basically that is a um, that's a valid statement. <laughs> well, that's um that's basically um, something you can start foundational. So that's what this first thing is saying. It's basically given given any no you don't need any prior information. You can immediately deduce that. The um, this next one. Um, this this capital gamma is just um, basically any any other information you've got. So basically, let's give an example of using that one. So you can just, just if you can deduce that if x is a proposition, then x is a proposition. That's fairly obvious. But to be able to, to use that rule, you have to say if you want to say x is a proposition, therefore x is a proposition, you still have to prove something about proposition, and you have to prove that proposition is a sort. But we've pr pr really got that here because we've proved that it's, we've got this. So that, that'll be fine. And um, 
Ja, ved jeg sådan. <laughs> That's basically saying that you can, you can, you can forget things. So basically, from this, I can still I can deduce something else. I can deduce anything else. I can say go back to propositions type and forget about explaining proposition if I want to. Okay, this is where it gets more complicated when we're talking about um, functions and um, relationships. So we used to say, thinking about saying, say a function is from function, say from A to B, that takes um, an object of type A and gives you an object of type B. With theorem provers, we um, we reinterpret this and say F is a way of transforming a proof of A into a proof of B. So if, if I've got a proof of A, basically an object of type A, it's taken as proof proof of A. Then with this, with this F, I can turn this into a proof of B. So if I've got that, and I've also got, say, X is a proof of A, then together, you should be able, you can put them together, and you've got a proof of B. And um, it gets more complicated because you could say this. Um, what, what you'd prove from some A could actually depend on the object. So you could say F is um, for some X, say, um, I'll say for each X in A, we can prove some statement B of X. And then, so then you've, if you've got that and you've got an X, which is, then you can prove B of X. And that's what some of those rules are focused on. And there's a few more rules to do with, say, renaming. So this one is all about renaming. So basically, if I've got this, then I can 